Hey guys, it's Miss Miller and this is my little girl Ariel. She wanted to sit with me so I made a promise that she would be quiet. Uh, the rest of my family, I don't know if they're going to be quiet or not. So, um, I assume you've all read your PowerPoint for energy so this is just going to be sort of a all-in-one video where I give you a couple definition, de definitions in my own words and give you a couple equations that may be useful when we start to do some problems with numbers involved. So first of all, um, energy is one of those really thing, uh, really hard things to define. Um, really it just describes the state of an object. I really think that's the best way to look at it because the type of energy that something has or um, whatever is going on with the object will help us to determine whether it has potential energy, kinetic energy, um, heat, uh, nuclear energy, whatever, whatever we're looking at. Now of course this is physics and in physics we focus on mechanical energy. You look at heat and chemical energy more in chemistry. Um, so here we're going to describe the state of objects and when you need to when I say state of objects I'm saying is the object moving is it is it stilled is it some distance away from a reference point or a height above some reference point that's going to help us to determine is it being stretched is any energy being stored could it potentially do something all of those questions are going to help us uh, describe the energy of an object or the state of an object. Now to start out with we're going to look at potential energy. Potential energy is defined as stored energy. So could it do something? For instance if I if I hold my pen up um, some height, if I, if I drop it then gravitational potential energy is going to cause it to fall. Okay I have put some work into this pen to bring it up and we're going to talk about work in a second but when I let it go um, it has potential energy so that energy gets transferred to kinetic energy which we'll talk about in a second as well. Now potential energy in physics or mechanical potential energy has two types. We, we see elastic potential energy and I'm not going to give you the equation for that because we're not going to focus on that quite as much but elastic potential energy is present when an object is being stretched so you have a spring being stretched or a rubber band or <clears throat> anything like that uh, so anything stretchy involved an object has elastic potential energy now that means you have stretched it some distance okay if, if you have a rubber band that is just um, at its equilibrium position, it's not wanting, it's not being stretched at all, then it doesn't have um, any potential energy. Uh, let's see, the most common potential energy that we're going to look at is gravitational potential energy, and that is the energy stored in an object due to gravity or being raised to some height. I'm just going to write PE here for potential energy, and that we represent as a U for some reason. Um, the physics community represents potential energy as a U with a little g for gravity. And that equation is written as the mass of an object times the acceleration due to gravity which is 9.8 meters per second per second times the height above or below your reference point. Now <coughs> your reference point can be wherever you choose. What I mean by reference point is let's say <coughs> I have a table and let's see an object is sitting on a table here. So if I were to put my reference point right where the object is then that means that this is zero meters. So looking at my object it has zero gravitational potential energy. However if I put my reference point down here, let's say the table was one meter, so I, my reference point now is on the floor, then that means that my gravitational potential energy, um, or the height of this object now, is the height of my table. So this is zero and this has a positive height here. Let's say the table is one meter. My gravitational 
potential energy at this point would be the mass of this object times 9.8 times that one meter. Now the third option that you could do is, you know, what if we put our reference point just somewhere crazy above the object for some reason. Now in most cases putting it Putting your reference point on the ground makes the most sense because then we have a positive height. But here, let's say this was two meters above the object for some reason. Then, since or since my reference point is above the object, my height or distance is a negative two meters. I know this is interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so really your height just depends on wherever you put your reference. I advise you always put your reference on the ground or depending on you know if your object is starting on the ground and moving up then start at the ground. Sometimes it's helpful to um, put it at the if something is falling off a cliff because we like falling off cliffs in physics. Um, if something's falling off a cliff then put it at the top of the cliff and as it gains distance it's going to gain um, kinetic energy which is where I'm getting to next. So kinetic energy we we write as Ke and that is given as one half mv squared. Now V of course is our velocity, M is our mass and kinetic energy since it has velocity in it is the energy of motion. So anytime something has a velocity at all it's going to have kinetic energy. Now things can have both potential energy and kinetic energy. Um, you could be falling like I said we could be falling off a cliff. Let's say we start some high above the cliff then we're starting with all potential energy. As we gain speed we're still up some height so we still have potential energy but some of that potential energy is being transferred to kinetic energy. Now that brings me to work. Work as you know by now is a transfer of energy. Let me straighten this up for you. Well, work is a transfer of energy. Anytime um, energy is transformed from one type of energy to another, so just like I said with potential energy turning into kinetic energy or sometimes kinetic energy, when things move they build up heat. So some of that kinetic energy is turning into um, heat energy or thermal energy. Well work has to be done, okay? And for something to change an object's state, there has to be a force applied. So we have an equation for work that is given by force times distance. So the amount of, if you, um, let's say we wanted to carry a box up the steps. I, I think maybe your PowerPoint even gave this example. If you carry a box up the steps, you're, you're changing its motion. You're doing some amount of work on that. You have a force times a distance. Um, now if you carry that box up another set of steps then you've done twice the amount of work. So work is just force times the distance that the force is applied. Okay, um, The unit for work and energy, now work is a transfer of energy. If, if you transfer you know three apples off a truck then you transferred three apples. Apples are the unit. Um, here we're transferring energy, so that has the same um, units as energy, which are joules, and a joule is a newton meter. Okay, that's how you say that, um, or it's pronounced joules, spelled J-O-U-L-E. Now power, uh, just another definition, is the rate at which we do work. So anytime something says it's a rate, um, velocity is the rate of a the rate of change of position and acceleration is the rate of change of velocity so if we're going to look at power we are looking at the rate of change of work so we are going to see how our work changes over time so power is given as work over time now if we were to look at those units those units would be the units for work which are joules over the units per second, which 
um, or <laughs> units for time, which is seconds. So we have a joules per second. Now the physics world likes to call that a watt. So when you look at light bulbs and you see a 100 watt light bulb, that is the amount of power, that's the amount of work per second or joule per second that um, that light bulb is going to be able to give you there. Um, okay, so this was just a quick synopsis of all of the equations that you're going to be using and a couple of the examples that we're going to look at in a couple of minutes. Um, have a good day.